So let's talk about the Kith Clark Samba. So um, basically, if you've been living under a rock, then uh, you probably don't know about this shoe. But otherwise, you'll probably know that uh, Kith just released a new Samba. Um, Samba's been basically the shoe of the year for 2023. Uh, it's absolutely taken over and everyone seems to be wearing them these days at least if you're chronically online um and in the wild you're not going to see sambas that much but definitely in the online fashion community sambas have basically have a chokehold on our culture and yeah so recently ronnie feig the owner and designer for kith he released collaboration between uh, kith and the samba and also clark's Clarks is a company that makes boots. Uh, honestly, I didn't even really care much for Clarks um, until this collaboration, and even now, like, I don't really know much about them. And, and I would say that's probably true for most people who are gonna be buying this shoe. Uh, most people who are buying this shoe probably are most familiar with Kith. If you're at all aware of what's going on with online fashion, you'll know that the Samba is basically ubiquitous on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and um, honestly, for good reason. Uh, I've been wearing the Samba personally for many years. I've been wearing it since like high school. Um, before it was a big thing. For me, I'm happy to see the Sambos finally have their moment. I feel like it's a classic silhouette and I've always liked it and even though it's like everywhere in culture right now, um, I don't mind rocking them still. Um, but yeah, anyway, getting back to the shoe. From the online perspective, uh, the collaboration between Kith and Samba is basically the best thing that could happen. Um, on paper, it's like a collaboration that can't miss, especially when they're using classic colors. This shoe released in three different colorways. It's like a dark green colorway, which is the one that I have, um, in all sort of like off-white color. And then um, I would say the most central colorway, which is the white and the green stripes. Um, and honestly, the, the white and the green stripes was the one that I was most hoping to get. Um, I rented the raffle for both that one and um, the dark green one, but I ended up only hitting on the dark green, so um, that's what I got. At the end of the day, I'm okay with that, um, just because I do feel like this dark green color, or basically black, is much more true to like the original Samba, um, and I think it's much more wearable, as we'll see. Needless to say, there was a lot of hype um, going into the shoe when it was first announced, I think maybe roughly a week ago. For a lot of people, it was just an insta-buy, and so much to the point where it's almost like you feel like everyone's gonna be having the shoe. Um, it's like such a clear fit between two different companies, Adidas and their, you know, most popular shoe out right now, and like Kith, which is, um, you know, Ronnie Feig, who's a designer uh, behind, behind a lot of popular shoes, who definitely has a following in terms of his designs, and getting the shoe, do I actually feel that it landed. So yeah, I'll be transparent in saying that I haven't had the shoe for long. Obviously the shoe just came out a few days ago and I just got it in the mail. But I can at least talk about my first impressions of the shoe. As someone who has had and worn the Samba for many years, um, looking at the Kith Samba, the thing that stuck out to me the most was the fact that the sole is obviously a Clark's sole. So if you don't know, Clark's makes boots and um, their clear sole is sort of like their iconic differentiating factor, and it's what makes them classic, I guess. Um, honestly, I didn't know that, and I think most people didn't know that going into the shoe, that there was even this clear sole thing with Clarks. Maybe I'm the one that's um, out of the ordinary and like had no idea and everyone else knew about it, but I have a feeling most people did not know about it, especially if you're um, only concerned about Sambas because they're currently trendy and Kith because they're currently popular. But yeah, the first thing that stuck out to me was definitely the sole. Immediately, it's like obviously way bigger than the regular Samba. So I have a regular Samba here and um, you can see like the sole on the regular Samba is like much thinner and like lower to the ground and automatically having a bigger sole on the Kith makes it almost like a platform shoe. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it looks like a different shoe entirely, but Honestly speaking, like picking up the shoe, it doesn't feel like a Samba. It almost feels more like, almost like a Stan Smith. Cause I have a Stan Smith too. And it just, the shape no longer resembles like this like thin kind of low profile, like sleek shoe. It's more of like um, a different shoe entirely. And sure, of course it has like the same, I mean, you can clearly tell like they're both Sambas, I guess. But um, the Kid Samba definitely because of the Clark's sole um, it immediately stands out. Another thing is that this is the dark green pair, but the suede like, and the, and the upper of the shoe, it honestly looks basically black to me. And that was my expectation going into this. On the pictures, it also basically just looked black. So like I even called it like a black pair on like a forum once and someone was like, don't you mean the dark green? Which I guess you could say it's dark green, but honestly it's 
it's basically black. The only thing I would say is definitely green about it is this inner part here. It's like, um, it's definitely like this green leather. It's like definitely a dark green leather. And um, the laces themselves are also green. Um, but other than that, honestly, the suede, it, it probably is a really, really dark green, but it looks basically black to me. Um, so I would basically call this a black shoe and I would treat it as a black shoe when I'm wearing outfits. Another thing also, the materials. So what are the materials like? Um, obviously there's a suede upper, fully suede upper, which is also inspired apparently by Clark's because Clark's has suede boots, as you might imagine. However, suede ensembles is not something that's completely new. Obviously on the original silhouette, um, you have suede on this kind of front paneling part, uh, but the upper itself is just a regular leather and there's no suede else elsewhere to be seen in the shoe. Whereas with the Kith Samba, you have suede basically on the entire upper, except for this back heel part, which is um, just regular leather, it seems. And then also you have suede in the tongue. Um, in terms of the quality of the suede, um, it's not nappy at all. It's very short. Um, it does have movement. So you're definitely gonna see that it's pretty clearly suede from like far away, which I like. Um, I, I, me personally, I really love suede on shoes. So, um, that's an, it's an added bonus for, for me to have suede on Ensemble. In terms of the quality of the material, I don't think it's anything super, super special. It just feels like a regular suede to me. Um, and uh, that, that's what I expect, honestly. I mean, I didn't expect anything super out of the ordinary. I kind of knew, like, yeah, it's going to be some elevated materials from the regular, or probably cheaper level that they use for a, a regular Twiggle Ensemble. But, um, yeah, nothing to write home about. And in terms of the sole itself, uh, one thing I will note is that it does have this sort of crease down the bottom. Um, it's probably from a mold, like obviously this sole is made from a mold, so it has to have a seam somewhere and it has it on the inside, which um, if it has to be somewhere, that's obviously the best place to have it. But at the same time, it is a little bit unsightly. When I first saw that, I thought the sole was ripped or something. Um, but obviously it's probably just a byproduct of the manufacturing process. Yeah, I don't really mind it. And again, also, if you're more familiar with Clark's boots, I'm sure you would know that this seam is a regular thing. But since I have never even touched a piece of Clark's boots, um, I wouldn't know. Other things about it, the laces, they're just regular flat laces, um, and yeah, they're kind of a green with some black mixed in. And in the heel also, there's like a piece of leather and it says Feig, um, has the Adidas Originals logo, and also uh, I assume what is the Clark's logo. But honestly speaking, that's basically all there is to say about the shoe. It's a Samba upper with suede. Uh, it has the Clark's sole, which is like clear and I guess classic if you're not like me and you know about Clark's history. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, like I said before, this shoe is a collaboration that is kind of predictable and it's kind of safe. Um, you're combining two very well-liked things, especially right now with the trends. Combining those two things was a no-brainer and then adding the sole, I think honestly most people don't care about, myself included, but it's cool to have, you know, a triple collab. That being said, there's also the price point to consider. So this shoe retailed for 220, which is kind of insane if you think about it for a Samba because um, these Sambas that I have here, right? I've had these for probably like four or five years and I got them on Amazon before like Sambas were really popular and I legit got them for I think $45. Uh, retail, these versions of the Sambas, which I would say are the original, are $70 I believe. And the ones that have like a shorter tongue and um, are more like lifestyle sneakers, those are the Sambas that everyone wears today and those are retailing for $100. So even the most expensive iteration of like the classic Samba is $100. And you have this collaboration which is over double that price. And um, what are you getting for it? Yeah, sure, you get like suede upper, which is you know a little bit nicer and probably you know harder to manufacture than just a regular leather upper. And it has different colorways, which are nice. You know, usually the sambas that are classic are just either this color, uh, black, or just white, which is just basically the reverse of this color blocking. Yeah, other than that, like it's just a regular samba, and like I said before, it's also not truly a samba. It looks different in a lot of ways, in that the sole is thicker and the overall silhouette's kind of thrown off because of that. So, yeah, the fact that you're buying a, basically a Samba with maybe arguably better materials and like, you know, a different, more unique sole for over double the price, is it worth it? I would say definitely not for the price, it's worth it. Especially after tax and shipping, you're paying $245 for a shoe that is essentially was for the hype, maybe $40, $50. I think online it looked much better than it does in person and also on paper it's a much better collaboration than you would come to realize once you actually get it in hand. And that being said, like, do I regret this purchase? Uh, not at all. I think it's still a really great shoe. I'm excited to wear a lot 
and I'm going to go into outfits as well later on in this video so that you can see uh, how I think I'll style this shoe. I don't think this is going to be a hard shoe to get your hands on, um, especially after the initial raffle uh, Ronnie Feig announced that anyone who wants to pre-order the shoe will be able to for about two days and then um, the shoes will come about in about four to six months. So basically if you really want this shoe, you can get it. It's not like if you miss the raffle there's no way you get it except for resale. Um, you'll be able to get the shoe eventually if you really want it. And I think that's um, something I guess shoemakers should do more often um, so that like people who miss out on the raffle can still get the shoe if they really want to. And if they truly wanted it and it wasn't just you know a trend hopping thing, then even if it comes in four or six months, they're still gonna want that shoe. Um, and also I will say with regards to resale, because everyone who truly wants this shoe will get it, I think that it's not gonna be too much more for resale, especially because it's such a high price to begin with, um, $220. I think, in my opinion, this shoe, like once it settles down, obviously right now it's gonna be a little higher because the shoe just came out, but especially once those pre-orders start getting fulfilled, I don't see this shoe going above $300. You have other Samba collabs, like the Wales Bonner collab, or the Gucci Gazelle, which is not really, I guess, a Samba, but um, basically the same silhouette. It's a very similar silhouette. Yeah, you have those shoes going for, you know, $500, $600, $700 plus on the aftermarket. Um, but honestly, especially because they're gonna have those pre-orders fulfilled for whoever wants them Yeah, these shoes are gonna be as ubiquitous as people want them to be. Yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about the shoe So yeah, I'll just go into some outfits now and see how it looks on foot and then we'll close Alright, so this first outfit here is actually really basic. It's just a gray hoodie from Abercrombie uh, The pants are from the Richie Lee collection, the sun faded sweatpants And on the shoes obviously we have the Sambas um, I just think yeah, you really can't go wrong with an outfit like this. It's an all-black outfit and really basic. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing much more to say here. It's pretty basic and yeah, as you're gonna see from the future fits, like, these shoes go with basically everything, especially if you're wearing a neutral or um, dark color. So, yeah, anyway, on to the next one. So this next outfit features uh, the new Capital Fleece that I've gotten recently. And for the pants, I'm wearing these jeans from Korea, actually. They're called, um, well, I actually don't know what they're called, but they're from a brand called Mason Mind. And I just love the wide fit that they have. Um, they basically just mimic the acne wide jeans or just any other wide fit jeans that are trendy right now. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just think uh, the black shoes go well with this fit. Um, I would have liked prime proportions to be a little better. Um, but other than that, like, yeah, I can't go wrong. And also, I wanted to mention, like, does anyone know how you're supposed to pose for videos like this? Like, I honestly feel like a complete NPC doing this, and I don't think I look good at all, but let me guys know what you think. Alright, so this next one features the exact same jeans uh, from Mason Mind, but obviously now I have a just regular graphic tee. I got it from H&M, and yeah, I love Snoopy, so there you go. Um, yeah, I think t-shirt obviously works fine with this too. I kind of tucked it in a bit so I can try to get a little better proportion going on, but... Yeah, at the end of the day, it's um, just a regular graphic tee with jeans fit, and Zambas are gonna go great with that as well. Yeah, and so for this next one, I'm um, wearing skinny jeans. Unfortunately, it's not the most trendy thing right now. If you're not wearing baggy jeans right now, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you actually doing? No, I'm, I'm just kidding, but I mean, for real though, like, it seems like no one really wears skinny jeans anymore, and I can kind of get it. Like, I, I actually, looking at this video, it literally looks like I'm edited. Like, okay, actually, wait, my legs are so skinny. Were they always that skinny? Anyway, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, I guess I'll cope with that later. But yeah, the, uh, the cardigan is from Forever 21. Um, and yeah, I'm just wearing a black shirt underneath. Okay, so I'm editing the video now, and um, yeah, that was actually horrendous. Like, I did not know that those jeans looked that skinny on me, and um, yeah, honestly, I would never dress like that, uh, but I guess I'll just keep it in for like the two people in the world that still wear skinny jeans. And for the last fit, uh, you already know, we had to throw in some parachute pants. Um, so yeah, we got some parachute pants um, from, I think, Zara on the bottom, and then on the top we have the, you know, typical Arcteryx jacket. Um, little cropped so I can have better proportion and yeah it's another all black fit and Sambas are just gonna go great with that and um, yeah I don't know like I guess all the fits that I did ended up being mostly black it's not like I'm the kind of person that only wears black but it just ended up being that way but it does show that Sambas can go with kind of any outfit whether it's like gorpcore or uh, you know a knitwear or just casual clothes um it can be worn with all those things so that's all I had for this video um yeah, I want to apologize also for the quality of the video in general. I do want to hold myself to a higher standard, but um, yeah, I'm just getting used to like 
content creation and making videos and recording and writing scripts and all that kind of stuff. And it's definitely a difficult process, um, much harder than I thought it initially was. So yeah, just please just bear with me while I um, grow and learn and um, hopefully get better over time. Um, also, this review, I kind of wanted to get out as fast as possible just because I know this shoe just released and um, especially with the shoe, like having a pre-order and everything, it's a little, it's a little time sensitive. So, um, so yeah, just forgive me on all those fronts and yeah, I hope that I can continue to make better videos in the future. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, it's pretty hard to find motivation to like continue making videos. Like it, it, it does low key feel like a job, but when I see people like enjoying the videos or like raising the view count, it really motivates me to continue working on it. So um, for yeah, anyone watching and especially anyone watching like this far into the video, I'm really grateful and yeah, I'll just keep working for you guys. Thanks.